My young friends, in the next 10 minutes, I'm, I'm given 10 minutes, already nine, I will try and give you a few words that would simply reflect what I have tried to do with so many years of my life. First of all, remember that I am a teacher and a writer. The writer in me is a teacher. The teacher in me is a writer. As a writer, I learn. And as a teacher, I try to teach. But my passion for learning is what sustained me for many decades. I still am learning. And I confess to you, you may be disappointed, but in my university where I teach, Boston University, I love small classes. You are not a small class. <laughs> but as you heard from Heather, that moments, life, remember that, life is not made of years, but of moments. Great moments, dark moments, sad moments, triumphant moments, the first time you meet each other, the first time you discover Shakespeare or Plato, the first time you are taken by a story written by someone that you never met. And that story takes you far away in time and in space and in life. But for this moment, which is ours now, I envy you. To begin is a mystery to me. That all of a sudden, life changes because of that beginning. The first time you read a novel, the first time you have a teacher that inspires you, the first time you experience joy, true joy, simply by meeting a fellow student, the first time you feel the first beginning, the first sign of love and the first time you acquire knowledge and you know that that knowledge is something that is important in life as it was in mine. Look, what have I learned? Small things, first of all. You say free the children. The emphasis is on free, freedom. Are you free? Probably to a limit, but remember, your freedom should never be at the expense of someone who has no freedom. Remember, you are not free simply to accept, to accept racism. Racism is ugly. Racism is stupid. Racism is absurd. Especially racism is never an option for culture. One day, you may open one of my books and you will see that although I have written more than 50 books, but actually what Heather said is true, night is the first. And if you begin with night, you will see that when I was your age, the world was a different world. At that time, totalitarian power existed in the world. On one hand, communism with its dark laboratories, of death, and on the other hand, Nazism with its factories of death. And therefore, when you will have read it, you will ask yourselves, how did I, the person who speaks to you, manage not to survive? That was an accident. I have never done anything to survive. It is simply, if you are religious, you would say by miracle or by chance. But the fact is, how could one survive and speak about humanity, and speak about faith, faith in culture, faith in civilization. Now you heard Heather again quoting me that I am against indifference. You cannot enter a classroom with indifference. You are in your classrooms with your friends, future friends, and what do you learn? 
not only, not only that truth can never be an abstraction, but it must be part of a human being. You look around you, look at the neighbor sitting next to you. That young boy or girl may be a future Nobel Prize winner. Who else can tell you that but me? It's possible. Why not? It's all something that depends not on destiny but on yourself. It's not that you would want to win a prize, but you will do so many things in physics or in medicine for the welfare of humanity that you will get such a prize. But even if you don't get it, the fact that you are here to support and to help and to love and to assist and to explore on a journey with a person, another person, boy or girl, that's already a reward in itself. But what will you remember? You will remember, therefore, that indifference is not an option, just as racism is not, just as evil is not. I said that it, the opposite of love is not hate but indifference, but that is true also of education. The opposite of knowledge is not ignorance but indifference. The opposite of beauty is not ugliness but indifference. The opposite of life is not death but indifference to life and death. So there are so many things that you are learning from each other, with each other. What I had to overcome is to see in the other in the street, in the passerby, not an enemy, but a fellow sojourner. Not an enemy, but a friend, a companion, someone whose hand, when it is open, is a gift in itself. You will learn that nothing in the world justifies death. We are told <laughs> we are told that death is a blemish on creation. It is surely true. But remember that life is sacred and therefore life cannot be replaced. Functions can be replaced, but not life. In my town, when they came, the enemy came, and we said to each other, it's impossible, they will not take all of us away, since so many doctors are in my town, so many pharmacists, so many cobblers. How can they live without us? And the enemy said, everyone is replaceable. Nonsense! Human beings are not replaceable. And so, a few words that I will simply give you as the lesson I have learned. And you will have read maybe some of my books or come to my school and learned with me what will remain, what I want to remain in you and with you, is simply that whatever you will do in life, whatever endeavor you will undertake, and whatever the road, the destiny will take you, remember these few words. Always think higher and feel deeper. Think higher meaning that simple things have their own beauty and feel deeper meaning feel deeper about one another. When I see a child, the sadness of that child darkens my universe and the smile of that child gives me more hope than I can get from myself. But then this is the mystery of hope. It is like peace. It is not gift to one another, God's gift, but the gift that one gives to one another. So I offer you the idea that you will find, of course, despair in books, 
It's okay, because you will overcome them. You will find other books who will surmount that despair. But never accept to be a despair to someone else. That means, let not your hope be at the expense of another person's despair. If I am responsible for your despair, I am guilty and unworthy. I want you to remember these moments that we spend together today as moments of possible and necessary joy, but above all, of extraordinary moments of promise, of an extraordinary promise, of hope. We are each other's hope. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.